scripture is given by inspiration of God. So scripture is God inspired. It's inspired by God Almighty. Do you know we are to understand the scripture as God's sacred book, God's holy word. You know, the scripture is not the contrivance of a man's brain. It's not the contrivance of man's brain. It's not creation of a man. It's not made by man's understanding. You know, it says that God, the holy men wrote the scriptures as God breathed to them. The Holy Spirit breathed to them the words. So the scripture is divine in its origin because it came from God and it came from heaven. You know, in the book of Acts 19.35, it says that the Ephesians held the, the, uh, the, uh, the, um, di yeah, the uh, image of Diana, sorry, Holy Spirit. It says in Acts that the Ephesians held in high reverence the image of Diana because they believed it came from Jupiter. But we know that the scripture came from heaven. So we should reverence the scripture even more and highly esteem the scripture because we know it to be from God and we know it to be from heaven. So the two testaments, the Old Testament and the New Testament, are the two lips in which God speaks to us. And also I heard someone say, they're the two breasts that the Christians need to suck for, for, milk, for nourishment for their spiritual walk with God. And, you know, I just like that because... Uh, it, you know the scripture is our spiritual nourishment and we should suck on both of these and read both of these for spiritual nourishment because the Old Testament points to the New Testament it's all about Jesus Christ in the Old Testament as well it's, it's both God's word so how do we know that the scriptures are the words of God well there's a few things here that I have found out so if the scriptures wasn't the word of God then whose could they be? Because it couldn't come from a man who is fallen. Because what kind of fallen man could write such holy lines as the word of God says? You know, no man who is fallen can write such holy lines. So would any fallen man declare so fiercely against sin and tell us to be separate from the world and tell us to live holy lives if it's written by a fallen man? It cannot be. So this tells us it comes from God. So, also, the angels couldn't be the author of the Bible. Because it says in Scripture that the angels search into the abyss of Scripture mysteries. So, the, the angels could not be the author of the Word of God either. Because what kind of angel could say, I, the Lord, create, and I, the Lord, say this, and self death the Lord? What kind of angel would be like that to impersonate God Almighty? So, we know that man or angels could not be the author of the word of God it's God alone because no one would dare to counterfeit God's name so it's a, it's, a, it's a book of God it's not a book of any man's devising so obviously in 1 Peter 1.12 like I said if that's the scripture if you want to write down 1 Peter 1.12 that the angels search into the abyss of the mysteries of the gospel so the angels could not be the author of it so there's a few arguments here that say that the word of God is the word of God. And we know it's the word of God by its antiquity. Because the word of God is of ancient standing. It goes back even to Genesis, to the creation of the world, to Noah's flood. You know, and no other documents, no other history goes back that, that far. You know, so we know it's the word of God by its antiquity, how far it goes back, how ancient it is. No other writings, no other documents you can find go back to the creation of the world and to the flood of Noah. So we also may know that the word of God is by its miraculous preservation throughout all ages. Because the word of God has never lacked enemies to try and take it out, to try and take it away. You know, for all generations, the word of God has been trying to be taken out. The Catholic Church have tried to take out the word of God and they burnt people at the stake for even translating the Bible to English. And you know, so the word of God has never lacked enemies to oppose it. And also the devil and his angels 
have been blowing at the light of scripture, trying to blow it out for generations, but they cannot blow it out because it's lighted from heaven. Amen. And we know it to be lighted from heaven because how God has preserved his word for all generations. Amen. You know, God has also preserved his word in the way, obviously, man can't. It says in the Revelation that anybody who adds or takes away from this word, they will take their name out of the book of life and add the plagues of the book to them. So nobody can mess with God's word. It is God's word and it stay God's word from every letter, from every word. And you know, the people have even sent out a thing, a decree like the um, Egypts did to the Hebrew women to strangle the babies at birth when Moses was put into the basket. So, so the word of God has been preserved, even though it's had all these trying to mess with it and take it away. So even to this day, so we know the scripture to be a what to a, we know the scripture to be the word of God also by the mysteries revealed in scripture, because no angel or no man could have known what's going to happen. So the scripture returns. It says that eternity, the, the eternity. Jesus Christ is eternity, and Jesus Christ was born. So eternity was born into this world. It also says that Jesus Christ become a baby and cried. So he that rules the heavens and he that rules the stars and he that created all things became a baby and cried in a cradle. And it says also that the Prince of Life came to die. He's a Prince of Life. He's the one that could never die, but he came a man and died for us. And so, and the Lord of Glory, who's a, is the glorious one in heaven, the majesty of heaven, he came and he was despised. And he was put to shame for us. So all of this is revealed in scripture. That sin should be punished to the full. Yet so pardoned to the full through Jesus Christ. Amen. So if the scripture hadn't revealed all of this. We would have never known it. We would have never known the mysteries. Even the doctrine of the, revelate, of the re resurrection. And you know, when Jesus resurrects us. All the thousand pieces of the body that have been scattered. Even the ashes have been scattered over seas or whatever. This is going to all come back together into one body. So it's not really a resurrection, it's another creation. Because Jesus Christ is going to resurrect us. And all of our parts of our body that have been rotted are going to come back to life. And how could anyone obviously devise such sacred mysteries and riddles? Except the word of God revealed it. So the scripture also contains in it matters of such holiness and it shows to be of God because of the holiness that it, it calls us to. So the Holy Scripture is also compared to silver that's refined seven times and it is very pure. It says your scripture, it says your, your, it is, the word of God is very pure. You know, it's so pure that it purifies everything else. So it is a sacred stream flowing from the fountain of life. Amen. You know, so all laws and the edicts of man have their corruptions, but the word of God has no corruption at all. Amen. Has not the least tincture in it. It is very pure and fine. In Psalm 119, 140, it says that word is very pure. So the scripture is so pure, like I said, it purifies everything else. You know, the scripture presses holiness as no other, you know, book ever did. The scripture tells us to live soberly, to live righteously and godly in this present world. It tells us that the grace of God teaches us to deny ungodliness and teaches us to live soberly, righteously and godly in this present age. You know, so the scripture is the royal law. Which not only commands our affections and our act, it not only commands our affections, but it binds our heart to good behaviour, and it also binds our words to holy speech. So the scripture also is evident that is the word of God by its predictions. You know, no other book can predict like the word of God, the prophecies that are in the Bible, the prophecies that have already come to pass. You know, the word of God, it says. In Isaiah 7.14, that a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. And Isaiah saw this and it happened. It's happened already. 
And also in Daniel 9, 25, 26, it says the Messiah shall be cut off. So, and the Messiah was cut off. You know, the scripture foretells things that would happen many centuries after. Even to the very day of Egypt's deliverance, of uh, Israel's deliverance from Egypt. Because in Exodus 12, 41, it says, And it came to pass at the end of the 430 years, even the self same day, it came to pass that all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. So it even predicts the day of things and the, the very day of things sometimes. And it's very point, exactly as it says, because it's God's word and God foretells and foresees everything. <laughs> so the, this prediction of future things clearly tells us that it is from God. It is from heaven. So the scripture also appears to be the word of God by the impartiality of the men that wrote it. So what kind of man would write a book and black their own faces and black their own reputations? Nobody. Because man, when they write, they want to glorify themselves and want to big up themselves. But the scripture, it says that Moses recorded himself striking the rock and missing the land of promise by his disobedience. And also David. It, David writes down about his adultery and his murder. Yeah. And he, he missed God's, what God said to him for that. Yeah. So any, nobody would write this book and black their own faces and black their own reputations if it's from man. It's only because it's from God. So also the scripture is known to be the word of God by the power and, that it has upon the consciences and the souls of men. Because it has changed the hearts and transformed the minds. By reading scripture, people have become other people. You know, people have changed into different people. So they have been made holy and glorious by reading the scripture. Because the scripture, it changes our hearts when we read it by the Spirit of God. It changes our minds, it transforms us. So by reading other books, our hearts may be warmed. But by reading the word of God, is, is changed and transformed. So in 2 Corinthians 3.3 3, it says, You are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God. So the word was copied into their hearts, and then they became Christ's epistles. So where people could read Christ in them and, and through them, by the way they lived. Because the word of God was copied into their hearts and it changed them, the spirit of God with the word. Mm -hmm. So a Christian also, his chief comforts come from the well of salvation. Because this is a well of salvation. We can draw so much for our salvation, so much from this, this well of spiritual nourishment. So it says in the scripture that we through comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So when a poor f soul is ready to faint, then the scripture drops medicine to comfort us. So when a soul feels deserted and alone, then the scripture drops the oil of gladness and says to us, I will never leave or forsake you. You know, now the scripture having such heart comforting and transforming power in it, we must know that it is from God and from heaven. It can be from no other place. So now we're going to look at, are all the books of the Bible divine in its origin, of divine authority? Because I have a Bible at home, the Geneva Bible, and it was before the King James. So before, obviously, the King James and before the, when the first Bible came out, it had books, two different, it had, in my other Bible, it's got different books that are not in here. And... These books that are in here are called the canon of scripture, which means that they are canon for our rule and faithful practice. So only those that are called the canonical scripture are inspired by God. So why are the scriptures called canonical? Because they are the only rule and faith for us and our practice with God. So the canon is to direct our lives in a way that God has for it to go. When you shoot a canon, it goes one way, one direction. So the canon of scripture is for us to go God's way and God's direction. So the word is the judge of all. 
And the word of God is the rock of infallibility. It's infallible. You know, it cannot be changed. It is infallible. It is as it is and says it as it is. And it cannot be changed. It cannot be altered. God's word is infallible. It does not change. It's the same today, yesterday and forever. Mm -hmm. God's word does not end. Even though this world will end and pass away, God's word will never pass away. Yeah. You know, so the only thing which is to be received for truth is only what agrees with scripture. Now, this is why I was asking God, and also it tells me in my Geneva Bible that the, the other books of the Bible, they are, godly, godly men writ them, but they're not inspired by the Holy Spirit. That's why they removed them from, and, and in King James, he's got these books. So the other books are called Apocrypha. So they are written, obviously, by man, godly men, but they're not inspired by God, because in them, the reason why they took them out, they, done a, they put them against the scripture, and there's things in there that speak against what the scripture says. So then they removed them. This is how they, done the, this is how they tested and to find out that if these books were inspired by the Spirit of God, as the Holy Transcripts was. So everything we read, everything we listen to, and everything we hear, we need to go to God's Word and check that it is lining up with the Word of God. Because in the book of Acts, there was people called the Bereans. And the Apostle Paul was preaching. And the Bereans went home and checked in the Word of God to check if the things were so, what he said. And this was Apostle Paul. So when we listen to sermons and when, what we're hearing and reading, we need to make sure that it's lining up with Scripture and not twisting the Scripture because deception is so subtle. It twists the Scripture even a tiny little bit and we have to know the Scripture ourselves. So all things in divinity are to be brought to the scriptures to make sure that they agree. So there's also a book that I heard about, uh, the book of Enoch. Now, I was seeking the Lord on this, and you know, the book of Enoch is got stuff in it that is against what the Bible says. So it cannot be from God. It's not Holy Spirit inspired. But there's many people, many Christians believing it's inspired by the Holy Spirit. And it's a lost book of the Bible. But I was looking into it. And the stuff in there, some of it does not go with scripture. It speaks against what scripture says. So from this we know it's not from divine origin. So we have to be very careful what we believe in. And what we're reading and what we are. We need to stand alone on the word of God alone. So the scripture is the complete rule of faith and practice for us. It's full of things necessary for salvation. Because in 2 Timothy 3.15 it says, From a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which is able to make you wise unto salvation. So it shows what we are to believe concerning God, and it shows also what we are to practice it gives us an exact model of true religion and perfectly instructs us into the deep things of God. So therefore we should take all the scripture literally. We should literally take the scripture and ask God and pray over the scriptures. We can't just pick what scriptures we want to obey and what scriptures we want to leave out. The scripture is all the word of God. And we should take all scripture literally because God has spoken this for us for today and he's preserved this for us today if god didn't want to hear us hear things today god have, would have said to the people that made it i'll oh, leave that bit out that was for then and this is for now but god has given this for a rule of an instruction to righteousness for us to obey and us mm. to live and for us to walk in god's way so what is the main scope and the end of scripture it is to reveal the way of salvation it makes clear the discovery of Jesus Christ. It says in John 20, 31, that these things are written, that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, and that believing you might have life through his name. So the word of God is also a test, whereby our faith and our graces are tested. So when we read the word of God, sometimes our faith is tested. Sometimes we are doing things 
and we are in something that the Word of God speaks against. And our faith and grace is tested to see if we are going to seek God on it to come out from what we're doing wrong, what the Scripture says. So the Lord Jesus Christ said in John 14, 15, If you love me, do what I command. So if we love Jesus, we are going to obey the Word of God, and we are going to obey what He commands. You know, we sing some of these songs, Lord, I give you everything, I give you all of me. But, you know, if we sing this song and we don't live the song, it's religion. You can't sing songs and not live the songs. You can't sing these songs and go out and we're doing what we're doing against what the song says. It's just religion. We might as well not sing the songs if we are not going to really, uh, really want to sing that with our hearts. You know, we have to sing these songs with our hearts and really cry out to God as a prayer. God, I want this in my life. Otherwise, it's just religion. You know? So some things, the scripture... So, so, but, so, but people... I've heard, actually, people say recently, I'm not going to name anybody, but some people say that we don't have to obey what Apostle Paul said because it's not, a, it's not God's word. We only have to obey what God says and what the Holy Spirit says, what Jesus says. But if Paul said it, we don't have to obey it. We, we don't have to... But the scripture says all scripture is given by inspiration of God. So some scripture is not the Apostle Paul's word. Apostle Paul writ revelation from God Almighty. So it's all God's word. Every letter, every word, every thing, F to A, A and D, D, every single letter is God's word. It's holy and living. So we can give Christ no glory unless we bear testimony to his teaching. So what I was teaching last month, uh, we live to glorify God and to enjoy him. This is why we are alive, this is why we die. So we, but we cannot glorify Christ, we cannot glorify him unless we give bear t uh, testimony to his teaching. And how do we bear testimony to Christ's teaching? By being obedient to what he says, by making his teaching the rule and faith of our lives and practice. By walking according to God's word and God's word alone. You know, sometimes I think we can get our theology and our revelation from some songs we hear and from some things we watch on TV. And it's very dangerous because it's against scripture. Some of these songs are from men's emotions and men's feelings and men's... It's not spirit inspired. If we listen to the songs from olden days, from the 80s, these scripture songs, you can feel the spirit of God behind them. But today, many of the songs are from man's emotions and feelings, and just to get, uh, and it's not in spirit inspired. I'm not saying all of it, but some of it is. It's like a party, uh, party kind of. It's like going to a worldly party. Some of the worship in the churches, and we have to be careful. We don't get our theology from some of these songs. It has to be from the Word of God. So in this way, we testify to the world. That God's teaching is holy by us obeying it and living it. We testify to the world then that the, whole, the scripture is holy and heavenly. Because we, they see us living the scripture. We are epistles for Christ and they see the scripture lived. And then they can bear testimony that Christ is alive through us. And that we look different to the world. Because we can't look the same as the world. Because we go out. Sometimes you have to ask a Christian, are you a Christian? Because they look like the world, dress like the world, they're acting like the world, speaking like the world. We have to be different and set apart. The scripture says this. It says that Christ died, not just to save us from our sins, but also to deliver us from this evil present world. Because this world is evil and we are told to be separate, to separate from the world, to be ye separate. Be holy for I am holy. And without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. So we should strive for this. Do you know Christ has died for us? Salvation is from Christ alone. But because of what Christ has done for us, because of his mercy and his grace towards us, because of his love to us, we should strive to obey him. We should seek to obey him in everything. You know, because sometimes we can make up our own Christianity and it's not of Christianity of the Bible. Never mind, I preach to you what true discipleship was, that Jesus said we have to hate our own father and mother and love and not love our lives, and we have to hate our own lives, we have to give up for him. This is what Jesus said, it's his words. We have to love him above our families, we have to love him above all things, because he is the one. 
that's made us. He's the one that created us. He's the one that's given us life. And it's all about him Amen. and his word. Amen. You know, so I, you know, I want to give a testimony because literally I was in work the other day on, I think it was Friday. I was in work. And when I was in work, I was washing my hands and I was praying and then I went to wash my hands in the bathroom. And when I was washing my hands in the bathroom, I heard these words. I heard God say very clearly, he said, these words that you hear, write down and speak. So I said, okay, Lord. So I went out of the bathroom and God began to speak to me so powerfully. I've never heard God like this before. You know, and God confirmed it with his presence as God was speaking to me and downloading this message into me. You know, the fear of God was all over me and I was trembling and nearly crying and the presence of God filled the whole place where I was in work. I was working on my own up on the top floor. But the presence of God has come so strong and God spoke to me and gave me the divine word. And now I'm going to just read this word because I'm, I don't want to add or take away to what I heard. So I read it down. So this is what I heard. The words that you hear, write down and speak. The church has turned away from my word and turned to fables and idols to serve a God made by their own imagination, teaching things not according to my word, but from their own feelings and their emotions. I will send judgment upon the church and upon this land that they may repent and turn unto me and my word of all their hearts. Tell the church to repent and to walk according to my word, for I have done great and mighty things in their midst, and they regard it not. I have shown my power and demonstrated my love, and they have turned my grace into lavishness. My anger is aroused, for the church has trampled under their feet the blood of my son. But if you turn to me with all your hearts and walk according to my word, I will withdraw my anger and turn unto you with mercy and grace. So this is the words that I heard. And these are the words that I was told to speak. So this is what God is saying. We have to be serious. We cannot have our own Christianity. We cannot have our teachings for our emotions and our feelings. We have to be teachers of God's word. We have to be obedient to God's word. If we love Christ, we have to obey his word. You know, because true faith in Christ brings forth good works. Good works doesn't bring salvation. But true salvation brings forth good works for God. When you're truly sanctified, when you're truly filled with the Spirit, He begins to sanctify you, change you. And He began to desire God. And He began to desire the things of God. You know, but we're all on different levels. God's doing different things in each of our lives. So we can't compare ourselves to each other. We have to go to Scripture. And if we're struggling on one thing of Scripture, we have to humble ourselves and pray over it. We can't just say, oh, I don't want to be a scripture and I leave that. We have to pray over it, humble ourselves, seek God on it. Say, God, I want to obey your word. Make me like this, Lord. I have not been like this, Lord. Holy Spirit, only you can change me and make me like this. Because it's only the Spirit of God that can change us, transform us, and deliver us. Amen. But unless we're praying on these things, the Holy Spirit is not going to change us. You know, unless we're not... We desire the Holy Spirit have to have cooperation with our hearts. Mm. You know, once our heart is in cooperation with Him, then He is going to do something. Mm. But if we're reading the scripture and say, Oh, this is not relevant for me today, I just I want this part, I don't want that part, you know, the Holy Spirit is not gonna work with that. Mm. We have to be humble. Yeah. It says that God resists the proud but gives grace unto the humble. Mm. So I'm gonna leave it as there. Give God praise for His word. And let's pray that this is an encouragement and that we be Christians of the Bible. Bible scriptures. Bible believing scriptures. Bible doing scriptures. Christians. Sorry, not scriptures. Christians.